So today I went, uh, I, I bought a cleaning machine on Ricardo for 390 Swiss francs. And this is a super cool, um, it's like the size of a dishwasher. And it just has this compartment in the top. And that's the inside. It just has this one little compartment in the top where you put the... Um, the tray with the watch parts, and then it cycles through the whole cycle on a timer. Um, so I'm psyched about that. I'm going to go pick that up. And uh, Paul asked me to do a video about my travels around Switzerland. So since I picked this thing up, I took my iPhone. I took cameras too. I filmed in the car and I filmed um, in the uh, shop. So I'll just cut to that now. So Paul said I should make some videos about the uh, about my journeys around Switzerland, which um, I totally should, and I'm doing. But um, or I'm doing it now. But um, I just left this little um, <clears throat> this watchmaker's shop where he he does watch repair, and he has like a million tools, and uh, and he also buys and sells uh, vintage watches. And uh, I'll show you that clip after after this introduction, but um, uh, it's so cool. Um, anyway, this is I'm on the road now, going back from there, back to Geneva. This is about an hour and a half away from Geneva. And um, so you can see a little bit of the Swiss, what it looks like in this part of Switzerland. Um, but uh, basically the, the situation with this guy was that I bought a, a watch cleaning machine on the Swiss auction website for about $400. And it's a fully automatic, like, I think it's Elma or Elna. Um, so it has all the liquids inside it, and then you just stick the, the watch container in the top with the parts, and then it just runs through a cycle like a dishwasher. So the, um, uh, I was excited about that because it, it, it will allow me to I have about 30 mechanical watches and one of the things I want to do is kind of do a restoration on each of them but without a cleaning machine I have to clean every part road, turn right. I have to clean every part manually so I thought oh, I'll get a cleaning machine and that will that, that's kind of like the final thing I need to be able to do these um, start doing complete uh, revisions on all those all of my watches hey guys so i'm um i just bought this watch cleaning machine and uh the owner of the shop which is kind of in the middle of switzerland uh said it was okay if i film uh i showed him my channel and he said it's okay if i film the shop a little bit so the um the thing that is so funny is that uh i bought the you know this giant machine and I'm like, well, what are you going to use now for cleaning watches? <laughs> and so he's like, oh, I just use a little dish of alcohol. So he's he's like, he's just going to use that. So I feel kind of dumb because, oh, let me show you actually, though, his workbench. No, it's funny because he's working on an Omega. And it's actually the exact same watch I'm, I'm wearing. Um, but the uh, this is the coolest little shop, and it's it's just a reminder of like he uh, he said he's been watchmaking for forty five years, and before that he was a, a precision uh, mechanics he was doing. So the, and uh, I love all these boxes of, he said that's mostly quartz. The parts are mostly for quartz. I gotta slow down. Cause... Uh, I wanted to ask him what these things with the little wheels are. Uh, 
c'era anche Marcello, c'era che stava anche a Filippo, quanto lui ne ha Sì, un, un 77-50, sì. ma è firmato il... Sì, sì. So cool. Hai fatto una parte. L'ultimo sei pronto tu. Adesso facciamo cosa c'è da so the this piece i'm not even sure what this is but he's offering to sell it to me i should buy it but that that is like such a beautiful piece so you know, it's for you compare la balance la balance la do balance for control la la control la, 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 la balance um so th this is kind of funny because I should turn the navigator volume down, but um, I came this way a few minutes ago, so uh, there's a tunnel up here. This is typical in Switzerland, like this tunnel is a is a one way, but there's you just have to work it out. <laughs> I guess cars, well, let, I'll show you anyway. Anyway, when I was coming, like a truck, basically you just have to wait. Like... In theory, I can go when they're going, but trucks cannot go at the same time. So there's no control. It's just like, be very careful. And actually, that one is better because cars can actually go through there at the same time. Um, there are tunnels like that where even a car has to just kind of take turns with the other car. Okay, it's not that incredible. But. Um... <clears throat> so, oh, the other thing is, the the owner of this shop, he doesn't speak English, so I, I spoke very bad French with him. He's actually Italian. Uh, he had some visitors there, they were all speaking Italian. Um, or he may be Swiss, but his na native language seemed to be Italian. And uh, so my French is terrible, so that was a struggle. And I asked him if I could take some pictures first. When I first was looking around, he said no, or I think he said no. And he gave some explanation I didn't understand. But then I just kept being friendly with him. <laughs> Eventually, he was like, "Sure." I, I did. I actually translated it in um, on my iPhone. I said, "You know, I I have a YouTube channel. Is it okay if I film some of your uh, your shop?" And then he said, "Sure." So, um, and then he said, just don't, uh, he said, it's not really allowed to be a shop. Uh, so don't tell anybody where it is. Um, but, uh, that's hilarious. So I think I'll just film until the battery runs out, but, um, after 400 meters, turn right, then turn right. Mm. Oh, there's another death turn trap right, just on top of this bridge. Turn right. In terms of driving. One thing I love about Europe is you've got all these circles everywhere. So you, there's so many places where you just have to Turn yield. Right, then take the highway. But right up there, straight ahead, there's like a, a place where you, if, you, if you're not paying attention, you could just have a head-on collision right there. Um, anyway, circles are great because at night in particular, I remember I grew up in Colorado and started driving when I was a teenager in Colorado. And you'd be driving around at midnight in, the, in Boulder and like have to sit at a traffic light for a minute and a half or whatever even though there was not a car anywhere to be seen and uh, and that was every block you know like it was insane so Europe is full of all these circles as probably many people know and then you just yield the right of way and there's no sitting endlessly at red lights I'm 
150 kilometers from Geneva. So it's uh, six o'clock and I'm back in Geneva. <laughs> so, um, I don't know why I turned the camera on because it's like total traffic hell right now. I think it might look interesting actually, just like these, these Sony cameras I use, um, one is this, uh, the one facing forward is, uh, I think it's called the ZV, Z1, something like that. It's a blogging camera. It's kind of um, descendant of the RX100 series without a viewfinder. And then the, the one facing me is, um, what's it called, uh, RX0 Mark II, the really tiny one that's kind of like a um, GoPro size. And they, anyway, the point is, um, Sony sensors are so good with low light that it might actually look cool. But I, the battery on the RX0 Mark II just died, so I had to replace it. Um, I'm starving. Oh, so what I was saying is, uh, I want to schedule a time to go back to the to that watchmaker's place because he's he's 75 years old I, I he, he's always been like buying and selling stuff in addition to watch repair he said that everything is quartz now that's why he's not doing that much automatic and everything's been quartz for 40 years I hate to tell him but um but the um I think it's Anyway, he has all these old tools. I, th I think he was buying and selling tools the last 45 years, too. And uh, it seemed like when he started showing me around, I should have kept filming, but he started showing me around, um, and he was just like, everything's for sale. So I'm like, i got to go back there with a watchmaker that speaks French or Italian. And... Um, and just film and have the per like and and ideally one of us would have some money so we can just kind of like buy some stuff right. uh so he keeps showing us stuff and then we could talk about what all these old tools are and um that would make a cool video i just need some help to do that i have somebody in mind but i gotta talk to him about it he lives only about, he lives halfway there, for, so 45 minutes away. For me, that was an hour and 40 drive from Geneva. But I think it's a, anything that, oh, the other thing is, both directions, I passed this sign on the road I wanted to get film of, but I wasn't filming, which is the Valley du Jou. There's like a, Basically, the road I take goes to, goes kind of around Lausanne, then up to uh, Lake Yverdon, then it goes on the on the east side of Lake Yverdon, past Gruyere, and then that's where the where this guy was. But the um, there's a the Valley de Jeu is like halfway between Geneva and Lausanne. You can take a turn, After and that's the watchmaking valley closest right. to Geneva. And that's only also like an hour and a half away from Geneva. And um, I forget why I even brought that up. Oh, I know, because a lot of the a lot of the sellers of these kinds of things are in not that like a lot of them are in the, the French part of uh, Switzerland, which is not that far from me. So I think in the future, I keep telling myself I'm, I'm, I'm not going to buy anything else because I have... But anyway, when, it, when I do buy things and I can go pick them up from people, you never know when the person will turn out to be somebody like this guy today and uh, it could be like a fascinating video. So I could, I could use the Ricardo purchases to um, connect with those people and then go pick stuff up from them. Turn right.
So my battery's about to go on the other camera now, and that's harder to replace. The one the front facing battery's about to go, which is unfortunate because I'm about one minute away from my office. I think when I was driving, I was like, man, just it, it's like life. I don't know why. I, get, I was listening to Super Tramp and just thinking about how life is great. And I don't mean my life, I just mean being alive. And um, being free to go around drive around look at the beautiful things out the window <laughs> I think I think the older you get the more you appreciate it's cliche but the more you appreciate simple things like just being alive and um, but it's also fun to re re like reflect on like it, it was it was fucking great to be young too. It's interesting. Okay, that front facing camera went down perfectly timed so you can't see where my office is. I'm gonna back in. After 200 meters, turn left, then cross the rotary, third exit. <laughs> what was I going to do? Oh, I can turn the camera a little bit. You can see the machine here. Um, it's almost as tall as the inside of my car. And it's got all the liquid in it, so now I have to see if I have the strength to lift it out by myself. He gave me a hand when I was putting it in there. Okay, so I'm back in my office, and the I, I, I have the machine here. Uh, here's a picture of it. And um, just recapping, I, I wanted to show you the... Um, these are the... This is the part that goes inside the machine. So the these are kind of spares. I already went over this stuff. But basically this whole thing slips down into the, the cup that's built into the machine. And then this has all your parts in it. And then um, this holds it from vibrating, I guess. I think that's the only point of that thing. But basically the, the liquid can flow in and flow out through the different cycles. And this spins it also funny because it doesn't seem geared to, to spin it but um I haven't I haven't used it yet so we'll see um so anyway this is this is kind of fun because so like I said these are these are kind of spares and you can use these different ways but the the thing I'm excited about is to see how many compartments I have in a single this is kind of key because if you can separate all the bridges and different areas of the watch, um, I'll also have to make sure that tiny screws can't go through there. I assume they can't, and that there are no holes. Um, there's a tiny pinhole in this, but I think it's just, it can be fixed. It's just a, one of the wires is slightly off. Um, so anyway, the This, I know from, from my limited experience that these are enough compartments that I can put everything with what it belongs with and I, can, I don't have to worry about um, putting screws back in bridges at least until I get to a chronograph or something really complicated. And then some of these just stack. So this style, 
this tile needs a lid because if you just stack these, it doesn't actually close completely. So these you stack with lids. And then these you just stack and they, 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 lid, they, they create a lid for each other. Um, so you could use these three or these three, or you can combine it like I did to get one extra one. Um, however I did that. So I'm totally psyched about that. Uh, and um, oh, the other thing I wanted to say was that the guy in the shop had this exact same watch. And um, there's two things that are interesting about it. One is that he was selling it for is that a reflection. Or, yeah. Um, he was selling it for 900. This is a 18 karat gold Eterna, um, and I paid about 400 in, for this, maybe a little more than 400. Uh, but he was selling it for 900, so he he knows the prices of things. Uh, and like I was saying, the tools and things would be fun to go back and buy uh, tools there. Um, and he seemed to offer reasonable prices. But from what I from what the few things he told me about, it's not like. It's not like he doesn't understand the value of things. And then the other thing is this Eterna, I made a video where I I put a pattern on the back with, um, what do you call it? Uh, like a rotary, I basically put a, you can kind of see it's still there, but I tried to polish it out. Anyway, of course, when I saw his original or his, his Eterna, it had the Centennial stamp in it. This one had some kind of a family crest stamped in it, which I, I removed. But his had a, a Eterna Centennial kind of stamp. And and it was, of course, the rest, not of course, but it was polished. It wasn't um, brushed like I, I had brushed this one in a circular pattern. So it made me realize I, I shouldn't have a circuit. I shouldn't have a brushed pattern on this gold. I should have it um, polished. So I, I started to polish this just with the Cape Cod, with this. But actually, I realized because now I can still see the um, the pattern from the trying to put the brushed pattern in it with the rotary turntable and sandpaper. I need to go over this with like twelve hundred sandpaper to get those completely out and put a mirrored finish on it to get those circles out of it. Anyway, that's the. Um, that's today's video. Thanks a lot.